and groovy. Okay, number nine, here we go. Vinyl records are making a comeback, but now you can play one anywhere. This is the world's smallest portable record player. It's called the Rock Block 2.0. All you do is set a record on a flat surface, set the device right on top of it, and turn it on. The rock block then spins around, plays the album. If you want something a little louder, though, it can wirelessly connect to speakers or headphones, and it plays both 33s and 45s. You can get one uh, online for about $100. Oh, little stocking stuffer there. Kind of cool. For next $100 year. $100 stocking next year. stuffer, yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. Number eight, the oldest recorded joke in history is a fart joke. Yeah. In 2008, historians announced it was a Sumerian saying, and dates back to 1900 BCE. Uh, the translation says, quote, something which has never occurred since time immemorial, a young woman did not fart in her husband's lap. No <laughs> idea. That's, that's apparently a joke. What? So look, we want to take the opportunity to hear some more old jokes that come from the fourth or fifth century Greece, okay? Okay. An intellectual came to check in on a friend who was seriously ill. When the man's wife said that he had departed, the intellectual replied, when he arrives back, will you tell them that I stopped by? I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get this one. Mm -hmm. A coward is asked, which are safer, warships or merchant ships? He answered, dry docked ships. Okay, okay one more for mm -hmm. you. A man is attending the burial of his wife who just died. Someone asks, who is it who rests here in peace? And he answers, me, now that I'm rid of her. All right. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I sucked. <laughs> Number seven. In the 18th century, wealthy British landowners were would hire people to live in their gardens. They were called ornamental hermits, and it was a big craze that lasted 100 years. Wow. It was a shift from perfectly pruned gardens to wild, untamed ones. Here's how it worked. Aristocrats would outfit their new gardens with whimsical elements like caves, mountains, and more. Next, they would hire somebody, whether they were a real hermit or not, to live there for a specific amount of time. One legend says a parliament member named Charles Hamilton made a contract with a man to live on his estate for seven years. If the man did not step off the property, he would get in today's equivalent $130,000. But after just three weeks, the man was found drinking at a local pub. Uh -huh. Yeah, needed to socialize a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I get it. Uh, number six here, McDonald's Hamburglar character. You know that one? He's right. been around since the 1970s, but his original appearance was a little creepy. You should look at the first commercial with him. Get yourself ready for a trip. One bright sunny day in McDonald land, Ronald, Big Mac, and their friend Tim were on their way to McDonald's when suddenly... The burger alarm! Cried Tim. Ronald knew in an instant what had happened. Why, it's that crafty old hamburger oh, wow. stealing all those delicious McDonald's hamburgers. Said Ronald. What do we do? Well, not even a crafty old hamburger can pass up a McDonald's chocolate shake. Said Ronald. And sure enough, the crafty old hamburger went for it. But then, like Ronald said, yeah. Okay, the hamburger was later called the lone jogger for a bit, would stalk young visitors to McDonald's land. Oh, yeah, wow. I don't know. I, 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 oh, There's some context for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You could rock me to sleep tonight because that's yeah. going to give me nightmares. That's horrifying. Oh. Number five. Nothing says the holidays like a mouse riding a lobster, but strange images like this were common for Christmas cards during the Victorian era. So, what was the reasoning? Well, some new newspapers ran reviews of each season's designs, similar to how movies are reviewed today. That increased the urgency for designers to create unusual pictures in order to be competitive. Also, they reflected the Victorian values of the time. For example, sending images of dead robins was meant to signify good luck. So you're saying, like, Dean's relatives would have been reviewing the cards of the day, is yes. what you're saying? Yes, right, his ancestor reviewers. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Number four, here are some of the things to get rid of before the end of the year, like unhealthy habits. 
Whether it's eating in front of the TV, procrastinating, or overthinking, old habits don't let new healthier habits in. It's also a good time to get rid of clothes that don't fit. Experts say, it may be obvious, but there is a potentially harmful psychological component to letting them hang around in your closet. They're a constant reminder of the unmet and possibly unrealistic goals you've set for yourself. Now is the time to empty your fridge and pantry of old food as well. It's a good time to throw out old holiday decorations that you didn't use this year. And now that your kids have opened their new toys from Christmas, consider going through their oh, old yeah. ones and donating the ones they don't play with yeah. anymore. Okay. Hear that, Maddie? And donate some of your toys. Yeah, your daughter. Mm -hmm. She's been watching yeah. all morning, so yeah. this is the first time she has she's better been. better be. Yeah. yeah, we FaceTimed with her yesterday. She was playing with some new toys. She was playing with new toys. Yeah. Toys everywhere. Right. They've taken over. Because she's uh, four, right? So they're, four it's nine. just everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's crazy. All right, number three here. Uh, if your New Year's resolution is to lose weight and get in shape, here's a tip from uh, some personal trainers. So don't join a gym or start one in January. Anecdotally, the trainers say it never works out for people who do it like that. People might stick with it for two weeks tops and then, you know, the doldrums of winter kick in and people just stay on the couch. So instead, they say you should simply focus on eating better. Cook more meals at home, get takeout as little as possible. If you've always wanted to take a dance class or, you know, join a basketball Sexy. league, do that. Mostly just go on a good walk every day, do that and stretch a bit and trainers say you're almost sure that you will lose some pounds and feel a whole lot better. Nice. So then when do you join the gym? Maybe in the summer? Are they saying never join a gym? I don't know. I was hoping for more information. Maybe if you get now. through January, maybe in February, that's uh, when you take on the yeah, gym. Maybe just Once start you've gotten through these yeah, first few days. Sure. Okay. Number two. Here's some old holiday superstitions from Pennsylvania Germans in the early 20th century. Many people believed that if the ground was white at Christmas, it would be green at Easter. Or if the geese wallowed in mud between Christmas and New Year, it would be a wet and rainy year. But here's the best one. They considered it bad luck to take a bath or change your clothing between Christmas and New Year. If you did change your underwear between the holidays, you would get boils. Yeah, I never have had boils. Yeah, that's good to know. You know why now? Number one, here's a classic <laughs> SNL sketch all about the gift that keeps on giving. Everyone knows the story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But this is the story of another more powerful Christmas Savior. The snow's falling down. It's Christmas time again. A woman has to get a gift for some girl at work named Jen. She doesn't know what Jen likes, and she doesn't super care. So she goes inside her closet just to see what crap's in there. In the darkness, there's a light. Then suddenly she sees that Christmas Savior's here tonight. It's a candle. <laughs> the one day after this, in foggy London town, two acquaintances are having to when one puts a present down. The other says, wait, what? I mean, I got you something, too. And she rummages inside a purse for some garbage that will do. And it settles on something that she had just from yeah. her boyfriend's mom. Christmas candle and lotion yeah. from her. From a lot of Christmas of candles. Yeah. Yeah. How many do you give it out?
excellent gift to give. Sure. Well, it's like, yeah, every time it burns, stick you know. to me. Is that really how it works? Yeah. Oh, well, that, that, that can mean a lot of things, Dan. Yeah, Every time it burns, think of me. Yeah. <laughs> we still talking about a candle? <laughs> Mike, you're on fire yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, you've had a couple of good ones. No pun candles. intended there, yeah. right? <laughs> wow. What'd you have, like, the other week that, like, we all reposted it? I don't know. I have no he idea. Had a good one, he, Mike's good yeah. for a couple of good one-liners every every year. Every one year. Yes, one every year. year. Two, two a year. The yeah. end of the year. So you're almost to the go. end, so. Yeah. Glad yeah. you saved it for me. Thank you're you. welcome. Hello, that's the 99. Feeling groovy.